So, now that my attention has been put on Beanox for what I think is the upcoming Spyro project, could they have slipped in some early ideas from Spyro 4 into Crash Team Racing? Let's talk about it. Whoa! What's up guys, Canadian Guy here, and back with a brand new Spyro 4 speculative video. In my previous videos, I've been saying that Beanox has been the company to look at for when it comes to the next Spyro project. According to multiple job listings, it would seem that Beanox is the team up to bat for Spyro. Before we begin, I'd like to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Opera GX. Opera GX is a web browser that is tailored to everyday gamers. One of those reasons is GX Control. While Opera GX uses a lot less RAM and CPU in comparison to Google Chrome, GX Control actually allows you to control how much RAM and CPU the browser is allowed to use, so you can keep your tabs open and have no performance issues while playing a game in the background. You can also integrate Spotify, Apple Music, or YouTube Music that plays your favorite music, but pauses when you watch a video, and will resume when it stops. You can also integrate Twitch, Discord, and even other messaging apps like Facebook Messenger to stay up to date on everything. You also can customize the look of the browser with an array of colors, wallpapers, and special themes. Check out the link in the description below to download Opera today and comment the hashtag InstallGX and let me know what your favorite game is. Thanks again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. So, back to Beanox. If Beanox is the team working on Spyro, then it makes me wonder, did they include anything in CTR that could hit towards what lies in store for the next Spyro game? If you don't know, Beanox was the studio that was the lead development studio on Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. After the game released, it had a bunch of post-launch content called Grand Prix, where you could unlock new tires, new characters, new carts, and it came with a brand new track. Now, one of those Grand Prix was dedicated to our most beloved purple boy, Spyro, Hunter, and Nasty Nork rolled in with a brand new track that was inspired by Artisan's Homeworld, Dark Hollow, and Magic Crafters. The Grand Prix also came with skins, carts, and many other customization options. So could there have been any hint towards, well, anything in Spyro 4? Well, there is something that could be a hint. When looking at the carts, paint jobs, and stickers, there's nothing much to go on. But when we look at the wheels, something changes. The wheels are all named after elements. Now this is different because with the exception of the wheels from Gingerbread Joyride, every other wheel set follows the same pattern. Blue Lava Rock, Spectral Blue, Neon Blue, Blue Tag, Atomic Blue. The name of the color appears in some way, shape, or form in the naming protocol of the wheel, either at the start or the end. But Spyro's wheels have their own naming protocol. On top of that, they are based on elements. But what importance does that hold? Well, we'll get to that in a little bit. So, a few months later, Spyro got another skin during the Christmas celebrations, and that was Winter Guardian Spyro. Now, this skin was very, very different from the rest. The skin wasn't directly Christmas themed, it was just related to the season of winter. And Seasons is something that is important to the Spyro franchise as it's something that they use thematically for their home worlds. Now every other skin that's released during this time was also clearly related to Christmas and not just a basic winter theme. Not only that, but when this skin was released, it got a gigantic special spotlight by Beanox themselves, saying the skin stood above the rest. Here is the direct quote from the article. But, there's one pit stop item that stands out above the rest, the Winter Guardian Spyro skin, an almost ethereal version of Spyro. With a sleek icy hue and imposing antlers, the Roastmaster gets a new epic look for the season. Pick it up to celebrate the joy of the season and our favorite lovable dragon. No other skin besides the Beanox Geary skin, which was the only new skin that came out with the Beanox patch, has ever gotten a special spotlight. But to add on to the weirdness, we already have an Ice Breath Spyro, which is essentially the exact same concept. Spyro, but with ice. Winter Guardian Spyro is the exact same theme and idea. 
but was much more fleshed out. It makes no sense whatsoever to make another ice-themed Spyro skin and then throw a spotlight on it like as if it's something special and new, unless this Spyro skin has something to do with Spyro 4. Now this skin has some sort of an element attached to it, ice. Now remember the wheels that were added that I mentioned earlier? Well, there just so happens to be an ice element wheel. I think an idea that Beanox is possibly playing with is that Spyro is going to be able to use different elemental breaths for different situations, changing his outward look and giving him brand new powers. Now this skin came out in 2019 and Spyro 4 may have only been in the idea and developmental stage and this might have been Beanox's initial pitch and idea for Spyro 4 that they decided to use and migrate to CTR. Now, this is when people say, gee, that sounds a lot like Enter the Dragonfly, how unoriginal. Sure, the idea could have stemmed from there, but if you use the same thick-headed thinking, then Crash 4 copied the idea from Crash Wrath of Cortex. <laughs> Wrath of Cortex had four different masks in the universe that did different things, but Crash 4 still turned out amazing. So why can't the same idea apply to Beanox and the next Spiral game? Now, when do I think that this will be announced? Well, I do have a string of thoughts that goes with this, but I personally think that we are going to likely see it announced in either June during the E3 season or December. Why do I think that? Well, you're just going to have to tune in next time to see why. Thank you so much to all those who not only support the channel, but myself and my family. Because of your contributions, I'm able to do this full time. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider clicking the join button or becoming a Patreon with the link in the description. I also live stream every Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on by and say hi. Again, thank you to everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next video and or live stream.